So now that you have your research question, you've gotten your search string established either in consultation with a medical librarian or you've been able to do it on your own, and you have inclusion and exclusion criteria, the next step is to search and find articles and include them or exclude them, and then to extract the information you need from them to write a review. And in this short lecture, I'm going to go over how to take the articles that you've found in your search, include them or exclude them, and then extract the information you need from them. I'm going to switch to my computer and show you how to do it there. So, see you later. So now that I'm here at my computer, I'm going to show you how I'm going to search a particular question that I have um, around mindfulness-based intervention and um, men with advanced prostate cancer. So let me search, go to my computer, and I'm going to get on the Yukon um, Libraries PubMed site. There it is. I always have to search it. Um, now, <clears throat> um, just to let you know, I went to a conference uh, recently and came upon this um, terrific um, researcher who works on psychosocial interventions in men with advanced prostate cancer. And her name is Suzanne Chambers. And I found out she is a fantastic, um, the leading researcher in this area, and I want to know more. So my research question is sort of what has um, the work of Suzanne Chambers shown us about the effectiveness of a mindfulness intervention in reducing psychological distress in people with a diagnosis of advanced prostate cancer. So I'll go through that again. It's kind of a, a faux question. Yours will not be centered around a person, but um, by doing this, I can easily show you how to do a search and to start to include and exclude articles. Again, the question is, what has the work of Suzanne Chambers shown us about the effectiveness of a mindfulness intervention in reducing psychological distress in people with a diagnosis of prostate cancer? So let me say Chambers S as one search term. The other search term is prostate. And I'm going to do cancer. And I'm going to do mindfulness. And then let's see, um, I get six articles. Very good. Um, now, um, I have these six articles, but I don't yet have any inclusion and exclusion criteria. So that's the next thing I need to come up with. So now we have a research question. It is, what has the work of Suzanne Chambers shown us about the effectiveness of a mindfulness-based intervention in reducing psychological distress in people with a diagnosis of prostate cancer? And I have a search string as Chambers S as the author, and prostate, and cancer, and mindfulness as keywords. I searched PubMed as the database, and I searched it on June 3rd, 2020. The preliminary results were six articles, and now I have to come up with inclusion criteria. Well, straight away, I know I want to search articles that report on the findings of a randomized controlled trial, and that's because I am interested in effectiveness. Right? Um, second, um, I want these, this randomized controlled trial of a mindfulness intervention. And then I want it to have primary variable of interest um, 
uh, as being, well, let's, let's see the best, for the primary variable interest being psychological distress. That's another part of my um, research question. And in people with advanced prostate cancer, um, and then I want this trial conducted by Suzanne Chambers. And I want it, these articles published um, in peer, oh goodness, typing here, reviewed journals. And I want it done, uh, published in English because I'm not going to try to read another language. Um, uh, and I want it published since in the last 10 years, so let's say since 2020. So there are my inclusion criteria. Articles that report on the findings of a randomized controlled trial so I get effectiveness of a mindfulness intervention with the primary variable of interest being psychological distress in people with advanced prostate cancer conducted by Suzanne Chambers, published in peer-reviewed journals, in English since 2010. I'm not going to go through exclusion criteria right now, but I think you can see how we're going to exclude some of these articles. So um, let's go to it. So now that we have our um, inclusion and ex er, er, inclusion criteria, we can go back to these six articles. Let's go to number six um, and read the title. Validation of the Factor Structure of the Five Facets of Mindfulness Questionnaire in Men Diagnosed with Advanced Prostate Cancer. And it is by Suzanne Chambers. Well, it hits on some of our inclusion criteria. There's no abstract available. But one thing I can tell you right away, it's validation of a, fact, facet stru of a factor structure of a questionnaire. So it's not reporting on the findings of um, a randomized controlled trial. Actually, it's, um, it's, I'm going to exclude it because it's reporting on um, like the sensitivity of this instrument called the mindfulness questionnaire in the population, men diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer. So that one's gone. And then we go to the next one, a randomized controlled trial of unmindfulness intervention for men with advanced prostate cancer. That looks like it's a hit, like we should include it. But let's start looking at the abstract. Um, prostate cancer is the most common, male cancer, etc. Fine, fine, fine. In this paper, we present the protocol of a current randomized controlled trial to assess the effectiveness of a professionally led mindfulness-based cognitive therapy group intervention to improve psychological well-being in men. Yes, all right, men with advanced prostate cancer. That seems like it fits, but it's really not going to tell us the final results. It's going to tell us um, uh, about the protocol. It's just a descriptive article about how they're going to do the actual intervention. You see, it even uses here um, 95 men um, per condition, one in the control group, one in the intervention group, will be recruited. So, will be. It's a future tense. It's not occurred yet. And now, this is common to publish the protocol of a randomized controlled trial before you conduct it. And it's published in BMC Cancer, which is a highly rated journal. Um, the reason you do this is for uh, transparency and to, again, add more rigor to your um, study. It's also a chance for people to, to peer review the, the protocol before you actually begin doing it. But this is a protocol paper, so I'm going to exclude it because of that. Then we get to the next one. Um, mindfulness groups for men with advanced prostate cancer, a pilot study to assess feasibility 
and effectiveness of the role of peer support? Well, maybe, but um, uh, this is a pilot. And now let's see if there were two groups, like in a randomized controlled trial, there has to be the intervention group and like a placebo group. Well, 19 men were initially recruited to three groups. And I think here that means three groups of them getting mindfulness-based um, intervention. And 12 completed the final assessments. And really all they were measuring here um, uh, was whether it was satisfaction, whether or not the men would actually show up and do the program, where they fill out the questionnaires. Um, its primary purpose here was feasibility. With 19 men, you can't show effectiveness. So this is a, a pilot study. It's not the actual randomized controlled trial, and I'm going to exclude it. Now the next one, the role of mindfulness in distress and quality of life for men with advanced prostate cancer. Maybe. Let's look at the abstract. Um, what was the purpose to examine the extent to which mindfulness skills influence psychological distress? Okay, we're getting close. Ah, but look here. It's a cross-sectional survey study. It's not the actual results of a randomized controlled trial. So now here you're saying, I'm going to exclude it because it's not a randomized controlled trial. And then um, we go to the next one, depression and prostate cancer, examining comorbidity and male-specific symptoms. The objective was to evaluate prototypic male-specific depression symptoms and suicidal ideation. Um, it's not the results of a randomized controlled trial. Here, I think I'm going to exclude it because Again, um, it's, it's really one time point, um, and it's just evaluative. It's not going to show us effectiveness. Then that gets us to the last one. Will we be able to include it? Mindfulness-based mindfulness cognitive therapy in advanced prostate cancer. A randomized controlled trial, finally. Yes, let's see if this is it. Um, uh, we sought to determine whether mindfulness-based cognitive therapy reduces distress in men with advanced prostate cancer. All right, that's my question. Um, I said psychological distress, but I've read the article. I happen to know that's what they mean, too. And um, methods, men with advanced prostate cancer were randomly assigned to an eight-week um, group-based mindfulness-based cognitive therapy intervention delivered by telephone or minimally enhanced usual care. That's the control group or like the placebo. Um, and we can get into the article a little bit later, but this is the one article of the six that meet all of my inclusion criteria. Now, we have that one article I'm next going to show you how to, to get the article and extract the information you need from it. So in the meantime, I've um, downloaded the article that we've included um, by Suzanne Chambers on the randomized control trial of a mindfulness intervention in men with advanced prostate cancer. It was in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. I got it off the Yukon Library's website. And I've made a matrix in a Word document that um, has in it um, fields for the information we need to collect from that article. So I'll go to my... All right, so here's the article. Um, and as I said, I just got it off the UConn's website, um, the library website. And I've gone through it a little bit. And as you can see, I've done some highlighting, um, some underlining and uh, we can do some more together. Um, 
let me view it as a single page so I can make it a little bigger for us to read um, together. There we go. And now I'm going to also show you what I've done. Um, first off, I've kept track of everything. You see the research question, my search term, the database, and the date during which I searched, preliminary results. Um, the inclusion criteria we came up with, and then the articles that were excluded and the reasons why. We went through all those together. So my final result is one article. Now when I said that this was a faux search, uh, you kind of got a sense that I set it up so that we'd only have one article to go through. Now I have constructed what is commonly called a matrix. Um, it's also a table, but this is a data matrix. It's, it's how you're getting the data that you need or the information that you need out of this article. Um, I have highlighted um, in bold the, the fourth um, data items that the syllabus says they want, it wants you to collect out of the, the articles that you review for your annotated bibliography. But I'm a little, I, I would suggest collecting a bit more. Um, so I have data source, it's a peer reviewed journal article, um, and the type of source, and then the actual source. And here I have the article um, reference. And I always put that in because it, you, you know, just a little notation and you may not remember what that notation was about. Put in the full source. Then I put in, um, I put in the article's research question and here's where we need to um, toggle back and forth to find it. Um, and let me do it the right way here so that we can um, uh, don't have to keep moving our screen back and forth. Um, so the research question, I had to read the introduction, and here it is. It's to assess um, the effectiveness of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy in reducing psychological distress in men with prostate cancer. Um, that really is um, right here. This is their research question. And you can see I put it over here um, in my Word document as the research question. And then the design, they made it helpful for me. The design is a two-arm randomized control trial, a two-arm randomized control trial. And I put in here for myself that it was mindfulness-based cognitive therapy versus minimally enhanced usual care. And I got that from reading the whole article. Um, and then the sample. Um, you can read here that the sample um, it's, it was a little difficult to find their sample, but I found it buried in here somewhere. Um, oh, here, <laughs> eligible participants, not so hard to find. Um, it was men with prostate cancer um, and advanced prostate cancer, so that means it was metastatic, it had gone to other parts of the body, or it was castration resistant and um, still progressing even though there was no circulating testosterone. Um, and you can see here that um, they had to be able to read, I'm over here in the paper, who were able to read and speak English, able to read and speak English, um, had no concurrent cancer, had no concurrent cancer, had no history of head injury, dementia, or psychiatric illness, I put that in there, had telephone access, and I put that in there. So I got the sample and the setting. It was telephone, um, over the telephone, but men were in Australia or New Zealand, and they were cared for by clinicians who were in the Australian and New Zealand 
urogenital and prostate cancer trials group. And that was um, the rest of that, of that um, participant's bit. Now the control, I wanted to put in the intervention and I found it here under procedures. It was um, eight one and a quarter hour sessions delivered over the phone by a trained health professional and it included 15 minutes of meditation. The control group I wanted to capture um, what the control was. So it's a data field in my matrix. And it was usual care minimally enhanced with patient education materials. So it was a placebo really. Just, you know, the materials that you can get, the pamphlets you can get from um, the lobby of the cancer center or wherever they were in treatment. Now the primary variable of interest um, here was psychological um, distress and um, they measured it um, with these three um, instruments. Um, and you see it's the brief symptom inventory 18, the impact of event scale, the prostate specific antigen anxiety subscale of the memorial um, anxiety scale for prostate cancer. Um, higher scores on these first two measures indicated psychological or cancer specific distress. So um, those two measures. And now uh, because I read it more carefully, I'm taking this one off because they really were using the brief symptom inventory 18 and impact of event scale to measure psychological distress. And I'm only interested in psychological distress. Now, I've read through the results, etc., to find the major findings, and the results are very interesting, but I'm going to let you in on a, on a little secret. Um, in a well-written paper, the first paragraph of the discussion section tells you or should tell you what the trial was about, what its primary variable of interest was, and its major finding. And so let's read that first sentence of the discussion. In this randomized controlled trial, telebased meaningful uh, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy did not improve psychological or quality of life outcomes in men with advanced prostate cancer when compared with those receiving minimally enhanced usual care. All right, so it didn't work. The mindfulness-based intervention did not work. Um, and that's what I'm interested in. It did not improve psychological distress. Again, I wasn't interested in quality of life, even though they did a lot of work on that. For our purposes, we just wanted to know if it reduced psychological distress. Now, um, I also want to capture their conclusions and again, their conclusion is very succinct. Um, and it is that greater caution and rigorous evaluation are needed before mindfulness-based approaches are applied across multiple contexts. So I just basically put that in here. Now, um, what are they saying? Well, mindfulness is really conducted a lot in cancer care among women um, with breast cancer, and they go through that here in, in their um, discussion. Um, so they're saying you can't just take it from that sort of setting and plop it down into men with advanced prostate cancer. So now strengths and weaknesses of this study, and this is my own um, findings here, they discuss their own limitations, um, particularly, oops, um, particularly in this paragraph, my computer's going a little wacky here, sorry about that. Well, you see it here, limitations in mindfulness intervention research to date. Um, that paragraph, they go through um, strengths and weaknesses of their study. But my own um, take on it is that this was a really rigorous, rigorously conducted study. Um, that's a strength. Another strength is we needed um, to answer the question um, whether mindfulness-based um, interventions um, worked in men. And this study 
answered that question. Um, uh, a weakness, um, well, you know, it's conducted in Australia and New Zealand. Um, pretty, uh, you, you know, there they have sort of a public health system, um, universal, universal as ac access. So it's hard to type when it's I'm um, doing this. Um, so I am concerned about um, its generalizability to a non-public system um, and say one thing I have in mind is what if you're in a really high-end um, private uh, hospital that serves men who might be more um, into um, uh, mindfulness-based interventions or meditation. Uh, maybe it would work for them. Um, so, so the generalizability is that there, there really wasn't strat stratification of the population. Um, I, you know, um, whether they had exposure to um, mindfulness before, whether they meditated as their own practice, etc. Um, so you s get a sense of what you can do on your own in coming up with strengths and weaknesses for um, the articles that you include. And really, these strengths and weaknesses become part of your synthesis that you're going to do later on. So I'll stop this here now. Um, and um, it really was to show you how to go through, uh, once you've done your inclusion and exclusion criteria, how to go through and do the search, include and exclude articles, and then extract data from them in a matrix. That then you're going to use this matrix as the source of your synthesis. And you see there, the matrix really is your annotated bibliography. Um, it's got everything you need for that first paper and then sets you up for the second paper for you to start doing your synthesis, which we'll talk about in the next video.